Welcome back to the future. So we're standing in this beautiful courtyard in the middle of the day in Abu Dhabi. It is quite warm for me from Northern Europe, but it's still actually very tolerable. There's lovely cool air coming down. It's, there's a breeze. Frankly, uh, one of our achievements in Mostar City is that we could achieve the uh, reduction of uh, temperature in Mostar City almost around 10 degrees compared to the roads in, in downtown of Abu Dhabi City. It's all because it's, there, are, there are no cars, there are no hydrocarbons. Uh, the design of the city where the buildings are close to each other, where we can get advantage of shading and more improvement on the climate change. Uh, and also the orientation of the city, it's 45 degrees of the sun. So we can get maximum amount of shading from the sunrise to the sunset and also the wind tower which you can see yes. behind us. So that is completely new to me, I don't know what that is. So what, tell me about the wind tower. Uh, we have invented this wind tower where on top uh, it is 45 uh, meters height and on top we have uh, some louvers which and the weather station. Those louvers, uh, they open wherever the wind is coming from and the other side the louvers are closing which right attracts the wind from wherever area it's I coming see, catch and it, it catches the wind catches really. yeah. the wind and pass it through a teflon below and on top there is a uh, water misting and this water misting cools the air while it's coming as we can hear that there's a slight like coming from the tower and that so that's sort of air water being passed into the exactly air. so this is the coolest place where yes. you can go in yeah. the middle east at this <laughs> point of it's time because on the sides of these buildings i've noticed there's, it looks like almost like pillows uh, teflon below ptfe material and they are injected with uh, compressed air and this air pillows they work as uh, uh, insulation where it doesn't allow the heat to go it's into the building yeah the buildings are very well studied in terms of the energy demand uh, we have intelligent building management system which studies every particle of the building how much is the energy in that area the occupancy of that area uh, we got co2 sensors in the classrooms so it, it's fully monitored and metered where we were able to reduce the energy consumption throughout of these buildings over 50 percent. They, they actually need 50 percent less energy to keep cool and to keep... 50 percent less energy right. in terms of uh, electricity, 50 percent uh, in, in terms of you know water consumption in, in yeah. all the buildings and also mo more than 50 percent for the cooling where we're, right. we're like Which is a in, in, the mid, in the Middle East 60 percent of energy is consumed for cooling, for cooling purposes. We are aiming to make Master City as a blueprint for future city. Uh, we're looking to make uh, to build one of the most sustainable cities, uh, a global hub for renewable energy, for clean technology, for people who are interested in to invest and work in a sustainable environment. Mm. NASA took me below street level and showed me how the whole city is actually built on top of a driverless electric vehicle system. PRTs! I love PRTs! So what, what, are these, what do these do for the, the city? Uh, from the development of the city, it was very important for us to look into the carbon emissions in the city and the uh, carbon footprint in the city. Uh, the PRTs which we have, it's a unique type of it. Uh, they are working on electrical power and the electrical power which is coming to those PRTs is coming from a renewable source of energy which is from the photovoltaics. Uh, while the PRTs are parked, they are getting charged, you know, inductive charging, yeah. uh, as we see those types oh, so of chargers. So that's an induction plate. Uh, there. Yeah. Oh, is it? Right. And so, the, uh, unlike the one we saw at Heathrow Airport, which is that the cars are driving on quite narrow roads, like, almost like a railway, or yeah. close yeah. to. This is this is just on a, an open road. The advantage of this system is that you can drive it on a normal road. You don't need to invest in the infrastructure. Right. I mean, it, it's a normal road where even normal cars can dry, uh, drive on. And we have some sort of a, 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 a magnet stones which keeps the vehicle in the track. And then there is sort of a, a Wi-Fi system which connects all these vehicles to a control room, computerized system where there are people watching the system and operating 
the vehicles around. So One of the criticisms for electric cars are, does it really make a difference because you're still burning coal to make the electricity? But here, you're not. It's 100% so clean. Is it, you're, uh, you're, it's 100% clean electricity. So it kind of makes sense in the long run, doesn't it, to, to have electric cars? Exactly. I mean, uh, and also to encourage the suppliers, encourage the innovative people yeah. uh, to, to think about it. Uh, today I have Mustard Institute where we have uh, around 300 students from all around the world. They are uh, studying and doing the research and development in uh, sustainability and in, in uh, renewable energy. So the ideas and the thoughts which those uh, students and the projects which ca they can create and they can develop, which will help us in building the city, building the transportation technologies, and that the benefit of it will add to everybody. Ria, when, you, when we're, you think of sort of sustainable and renewable energy, you always think of it as being really clean and tidy and this wonderful city that's being built here is this amazing, when you walk around it, it's so beautiful and clean and tidy and then you come here and it's sort of a big pile of mess <laughs> and rocks and dust and bits of wood. Yeah. But this is really a, a very vital part of the whole process. It's a prosthetic facility where actually waste materials from construction are taken to uh, here uh, in order to be reused, recycled, and reprocessed in order to, you know, put them back into the life cycle. Right. The but I mean, it's on a colossal scale. It's not, ju it's not it just a, a few scale. bits of wood that you kind of, oh, let's chip that up. We're I mean, the, just the wood chipping alone is exactly, enormous. Yeah. This is the, uh, the result of uh, four years of construction. So right. all those materials are coming from those buildings, uh, construction of those buildings, and uh, we are achieving actually None of it is going to the landfill, which right. is, which is wow. good, the, the good news. We're achieving about 95% waste diversion from landfill. Right. So all projects, all contractors, all construction um, companies have to comply to that percentage. But then, so what, how do you reuse it? I mean, for instance, all the scrap timber, because it's all the yes. building materials are delivered on pallets and there's boxes exactly. that they're in. So, so what do you do with that? First of all, one way of is to reduce it through design. That's, right. that's the first step. Uh, second step is to recycle or reuse. So uh, wood is actually being chipped um, here on site. Uh, when, it, when it cannot be reused, it gets right. chipped. Uh, and we are reusing it, uh, the mulch, uh, the, the, the byproduct is being reused for landscaping. There's massive lumps of concrete and rubble yes. here, so how, how do, what do you do with that? Concrete, uh, first of all, is, is a sustainable mix, right. a concrete mix, where we're actually relowing our carbon, uh, the carbon content of right. our concrete. That's the first so step. So that's right at the beginning? That's right at the beginning. Anything. It's being produced at our own master city batching plant over right. here. Then, when it comes here, it means it's a waste. Uh, it is being crushed into different sizes aggregates. Right. The aggregates are being uh, used for, um, for different purposes. Right. One of them is a contemporary and a permanent road sub-base. Uh, we're laying it here on all our roads. Uh, it's a very good material for sub-base. Uh, we are also investigating a few other options. We're thinking of per perhaps using it in piling instead of the traditional wet concrete piles. Right. So that's wood and concrete. Uh, I've also seen huge piles of scrap metal, of steel. Steel and other metals. It has to be 85 to 95% of recycled content. So all the steel here you're seeing is actually has a green recycled content in it. Right. So um, uh, the steel is also is taken off site for recycling. So then the one that I would assume is the hardest to recycle is the plastics. Plastics, so uh, different types of plastics, uh, none of, all of them cannot be recycled easily, especially in that market in the UAE. One option we, ha we have and what, what we've been using is uh, plastic. They're you take, making furniture out of plastic, so, um, so this is a good way to recycle it and yeah. to use it. But that is, it is an extraordinary challenge that you've set yourselves. Yes. In, in, you know, and you, and you can see from the evidence around us that it's definitely happening. And yeah. that's, it's really good. And yeah. you ju I just want builders from all over the world to come here and go, Oh, we could do this because yes. because the builders love landfill. It is definitely uh, uh, well. We did. We are best practice here in the UAE. Right. It is the first time this happens. Uh, we have a lot of interested parties who come over to to have a look at this yeah. facility, and uh, it's definitely um, an example for all construction sites yeah. around here. And we are setting the the standards. We are set setting the the way forward, and it's definitely being recognised. It is remarkable when you think about it that this project, Mazdar City, is 
being built in Abu Dhabi, a country we automatically connect with the extraction of fossil fuels, with hydrocarbons, with the oil industry, and yet they're using that wealth to help create this extraordinary project. It truly is breathtaking. If you think that this city, when it's completed in a, in, in a few years' time, will be completely run on solar energy, the, the, the building materials that they're using, most of them are recycled. The building waste that a big project like this produces is being recycled to a ridiculous extent. 95% of the, the building waste is being recycled and reused in other projects. The way they're managing water, the way they're using their electricity, the way they're keeping the buildings cool, the way they're designed, it's all brilliantly thought out. It really is a, a, a marker for the rest of the world. The rest of the world can look at Mazdar City and say, this is what can be done. This is possible. This is the future. This is really a lump of condensed future. It's extraordinary to be here. And as William Gibson, the novelist, said, the future is already here. It just isn't very well distributed yet. That's all for this series of Fully Charged, but stay tuned for some extra special bonus material.